All set? Yes, we are. Okay, I'm gonna call our March 22nd Planning, Energy and Environmental Quality Committee to order at 1.30. Let's see, it looks like we have everybody except Dave, oh, who's coming in now. So welcome everybody. Kathy, do we have any, Kathy or Brittany, do we have any public comment today? No, Anne, we don't. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Changes to the agenda. Just that revised resolution that Brittany sent out for the Chief Sustainability Officer. Okay, so um, do we, need to vote that in or was that in in time <coughs> enough? No, it's already on the agenda. It's just a revised resolution the committee should consider. Okay. And how about we'll go to minutes approval. Can some somebody move the minutes? Amanda, seconded by Dave and we'll do a roll call vote. Dan? Yes. Deborah? Uh, yes, with the, um, I believe I sent Brittany an amendment. Okay, sorry, I forgot uh, to ask for amendments. Yeah. <laughs> was it anything major? Um, yeah, it was just on page six of the, uh, of the packet, uh, page five of the minutes. It was. It just clarified that that the soil and water that that referred to was the soil and water conservation staff are participating in the um, harmful algal algae blooms reduction strategy. Okay, great. Thank you. Any uh, so let me take a step back. Any other additions, corrections? Okay, let's continue on with the vote if that's okay. So Deborah, you were a yes? Yes, I'm a yes that? with the changes, yeah. Okay, and I'll just, I'm gonna, I'll double back to the folks we already got uh, I'm, after we get through everybody else. Amanda? Yes. Dave? Yes. Dan, I just wanted to confirm. Yes, confirm. With you? All righty, double checked. All right, and I'm a yes, so that's unanimous. And then we'll, um, let's see, next is the chair's report. I just have a couple of quick things. I, uh, I attended the, uh, our uh, Water Resources Council meeting. Uh, Amanda Champion is our liaison to that committee. I just wanted to touch base with folks, introduce myself as the chair and, and uh, just see a little bit what the great work that they're doing there. I also met with the chair and vice chair of our EMC, our environmental management committee. So that's uh, Reggie Teasley and Kate Darfler and attended their meeting. Also the Energy Summit I, meeting I attended. And I know Deborah wasn't able to go to that. So I was just gonna give a quick recap on that. So let me find that here. So the, the tracks that they're working on for the energy summit are include new and emerging technology. So this is tracks and possible topics, new and emerging technologies, local power, finance and lending, transportation and planning, workforce, construction and energy efficiency. And this is still being worked out. Right now, the working title for the summit will be Energy Transition Summit. And uh, part of the reason for that was to have it be more action oriented, not only in this is what is happening, but also to further help the summit be more actionable in that people are attending and to give them actions that they can take uh, locally. So like, how do we get there as we transition, whether it's businesses, the energy grid, residential transportation um, and the like. Was there any thing, any, uh, did anybody have any questions on that or anybody wanted to add anything else? Uh, 
Okay. So we'll go to the county administrator's report. Jason? Hey, everyone. Um, I don't know that I have anything too terribly new to report. If you'd like, I, and I can just talk a little bit about the conversations that we had, uh, Katie, myself, Aurel, and uh, Ruby, around the shifting of the chief sustainability officer from uh, county administration to uh, uh, planning sustainability. Um, the, the, I mean, the primary, after, after getting into more detail about the structure of the position, how the position would function, who would be, um, you know, the, uh, what, what department would provide the best resource and the best support behind it because of its familiarity and its work that it would be doing. Um, we kind of felt that if it were to stay in the county administration, um, it would be a very isolated position in the sense that there aren't a lot of other positions in the department that are going to be working on similar or like functions that, that they would be working on. Um, they would be communicating a lot more with planning and then with facilities as they coordinate. So in trying to look at what is the best uh, circumstance and, and we can put the, you know, the best culture around the person um, for them to succeed, uh, we felt that um, we met a few times on this. We felt that it would be best situated in, in the planning department um, because there are similar functions or there's like overlap in some of the topic areas that uh, planning does from a sustainability perspective, environmental perspective that this position would be working on, knowing very well that they'd be coordinating with a lot of other departments and coordinating a lot with, um, with facilities, particularly around some of the green facility initiatives. So that's kind of where it, it came from. I think the initial intent is that it would be located in our office, my office, and then after discussing it further, we just felt it would be better, better located uh, around other, other folks that would be working on similar or some level of overlap in topic areas, and that would be primarily in planning. So that's that's the primary reason why uh, the shift in location uh, for the for the position it doesn't change its outcome or its expected. Uh, duties and functions, but I think is a better situated from a support perspective in, in the planning department. So one big issue that I that I have with this is that, Jason, you sometimes bring your dog in, and I don't know if other people at planning bring their dogs in. So this, I don't know if that this would, uh, you know, take away their opportunity to have pet therapy. We're an equal dog opportunity employer here. So um, if need be, we can make sure that um, I bring Sadie over to the planning department uh, on occasion so no one feels neglected. Okay, a any other questions or comments on this? I do have a 75 pound Labradoodle I can bring as well, Annie. <laughs> oh, Labradoodle. Pearl. Hy hypoallergenic, right? Okay, I'll count me in there, Deborah. Yeah, I wanna know why I've never met Sadie. Sadie is, uh, well, Sadie, oh, well, she's upstairs now. I'll bring her down. Uh, um, whenever, whenever we get back to in person, we'll bring Sadie around for everybody. Great. I mean, we've all met Buttercup. It's only fair. Sadie, Sadie is the, everybody loves Sadie when I bring her in the office. So we'll bring her by. Thank you. Any other, uh, Martha, you had a question? No or comment? I thought I saw Amanda's hand up. Yeah, I think I think the next legislature meeting should be at the dog park, actually. Um, so a question about the like the so the salary doesn't change or the, the classification of the position. No, nothing would change. It's just a location of uh, where we housed. OK, all right, great. And I guess it's already been posted. I'm interested to, to know if, if we're getting any uh, any applications. I don't know, but we have another 20 days or so. My guess is, you know, we usually get a big flux about several days before the deadline. I usually don't check. I usually don't check on any of the positions until a day or so anyways, just because, you know, you get disappointed. Then usually, you know, you'll get a flurry of them a few days before before the deadlines do. Okay. All right. Thanks. I actually learned from Ruby that um, it's actually not a good practice to check in advance mm -hmm. because then you bias yourself against people who might be yeah. submitting at the last minute. So um, yeah. I try not to do that too. Okay. Uh, we just um, tamp down our curiosity. Yeah. Gotta, gotta wait till the end. Thank you. And, and uh, as far as uh, uh, 
this is a, a slightly more serious question, but maybe not. As far as room uh, in planning, uh, you know, physically housing and having somebody there. Katie? Yeah, actually, um, it worked out well because we did the GIS consolidation with ITS. So we had a oh, right. position um, that physically moved over to ITS. So we do have a space for another employee. Okay, good. All right, because the, the legislature, we haven't been in in a while. I didn't know if you guys had moved up there or not, you know, so I did check my some, mail, but it was on the weekend. We made some minor modifications to your space, but nothing, nothing to be worried about. <laughs> There's that room right in between all the chairs. But anyway, um, so uh, let's, so we'll get back to that position yeah. in a minute or two. So th anything else, Jason, on your report? I know sometimes you talk a little bit about... COVID, but there is, I mean, I did not check the governor's press conference today, but I understand that there may be a change. There may be opening up um, age uh, opportunity, uh, lowering the age to, uh, to folks for, to get vaccinated. So um, um, I know if, if that's, I have not touched base with the OC, we, we won't, I won't touch base to the afternoon with them, but my understanding is it, it lowered it to 50 plus. So we'll probably do a, some uh, broadcast or some, uh, not broadcast, some press on it tomorrow, if that's the case. Okay, so they might have opened it up to 50 plus. I think and they I, did. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's, that's quite a shift. Um, and uh, I got vaccinated on Friday, and there was a ton of people going through there at the mall and just, I mean, I had a, we had a tour up there before, but just to go through it, just the streamline, everybody was really nice. Uh, so it was, it was great. And uh, so 50 plus, and then I believe over the weekend, pharmacies uh, were also allowed to now do people with uh, comorbidities versus just the other uh, categories that they had before. Any questions for Jason? Yeah, Jason. Martha, or, or Dave and then Martha. Just a frivolous question. I was wondering if we could buy a gate for the center section of the desks up there. We make that the dog park for the legislature. Oh, that's oh, excellent the legislature. <laughs> I was trying, I, for the moment, I'm like, where are you talking about? A gate where, Dave? <laughs> now you know now you know what now I know what you're about. talking about. All right, yeah. The centerpiece there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and my cat buttercup can go around the, the ledge and torture the, the poor dogs. Okay. Anything up, Martha? Yeah, I, I'm sure that Kathy and Brittany really want to keep uh, keep that clean. And so that's that's really we're gonna add that to to their position. Um more seriously, Jason, you'd written um that you're collecting a public comment on the pub, I'm jumping to public safety, uh, reimagining public safety. I, I think yes. it was Thursday or Friday and I wrote, or, you know, what about the comments that come into us? Either a lot come into the full legislature on the, the through the website and then we get stuff individually. So we're taking all the, we're, we're having the research academic group take all the comments we receive um, off the website and the channels we have set up to be able to kind of summarize them um, so uh, I would say to keep it consistent, either folks can, can continue to can file up their comments through the website would probably be the best way to direct people to issue their comments or send their comments in. Um, this way it'll all be assembled that way in one, in one, in one consistent setting. Well, there, there are a number of things that come in to the legislature and Kathy's staff, they traffic cop them to us. And sometimes we don't even know who, it, who it's from and whatever. It, could that just be captured? That would that's like one central additional address. This really doesn't have much to do with Pete. Can we move? No, I know, but this, you know, as Andy said, we sometimes we ask about COVID, and this is just one other thing that's a, of general concern for the for admin. Kathy, if you get if you're getting emails, you can forward them to Deanna and I. Okay, we've gotten several. That's fine. You can forward them to us. Okay. Uh, we'll take care of it. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Anything else for Jason? All righty. Uh, any committee reports, committee member reports? Amanda? Yeah, I was just going to harp on um, that we're coming up on HABS season again. 
harmful algal blooms. And um, a couple of weeks ago, um, CSI, the Community Science Institute, gave a really, really great presentation. I'm sure it was recorded about an hour and a half. Um, really, like they were kind of reporting on the past year, but they had some volunteers who told about their experience. And um, if you're interested in learning more, I, I can try to find the link. Um, but it was really, it was really well done, very informative, and. Um, they, you know, they only have a couple years of data, but HABs are really increasing um, every year, and they tend to sort of peak in, no pun intended, in um, July and into August. So, you know, it's obviously concerning, and um, they do also, so far, tend to happen more often at the north end of the lake, but obviously it's all connected. Um, and then I would just also say the HAB subcommittee of the Water Resources Council has been meeting and um, Darby kind of leads that charge and um, she's trying to get like, we spent a long time last year looking at the, the HAB's action plan and all of that, but she's really trying to get the small committee to talk about, okay, what can we actually do? And what can this committee do? And what can individuals do? And, you know, we don't want to put too much more on soil and water because they already have so much. And so anyway, I'm happy to fill other fill you in more. I'm sure Darby would be happy to talk more about it, but it it is kind of a you know ongoing pressing and um, challenging issue because we depend so much on our lake and people obviously get their drinking water from the lake and all of that. So uh, expect me to continue harping on the Habs and um, keeping you all uh, up to date on that. So that's all, thanks. Thanks, Amanda. And if there's any presentation or update, any, you know, Darby or anybody else wants to do, of course, we're, we're open to that. We'd welcome I, that. I guess I would also just throw out there the fact that CSI is doing all this great work and they are constantly struggling for money. And I think we should keep that in mind when it comes to our budget season again, because they don't need that much money, but they have a really hard time getting it. And they, they get lots of grants and they get money, you know, from us already. But, um, you know, to continue doing this co data collection, they, they need funds and it's hard to come by, which is too bad, but. Right, and uh, so I believe at the, what is that, the, towards the end of our budget season, wasn't there something added uh, for CSI, uh, you know, I can't remember if it was like after it was taken out, right? But it was added back. It was like I don't know, ten to twenty thousand, or can't remember the exact. Yeah, amount. I think it was for the stream monitoring program, which is separate. So it wasn't specifically mm -hmm. for like the the Habs data collection. They do, you know, several different things, but um, and obviously we need to do stream monitoring as well, but. Um, mm -hmm you know, um, Steve Penningroth, I think that's his name. Right. You know, he, he's been clear in the past couple of meetings I've been in that they're, you know, they, they need funds and, and it's, it's hard to come by for them. Right. So. I think it's a, we get a really big bang for our buck, you know, because they leverage so many volunteers that, that go out there. My, my partner has gone out and done that, you know, and it takes a lot of time and it's harsh conditions and all kinds of weather. So thank, thank you. Uh, for reminding us of that. Deborah? Yeah, I was just curious to know, did he give you a number, Amanda? Yeah, it's only, it was only like, you know, they're going to be like 15,000 short this year or something. Like, it's not a lot of money. Um, and they're, they, I mean, they had to set up a GoFundMe to try to get that, that funding. So it's a little bit like, we spent ridiculous. so much. Yeah, it's ridiculous for like this very basic thing of getting us data, you know, so. Right. Anyway. Right, which would cost us a lot more, you know, to hire if we were to go do it, you know, to, uh, the county to go hire people and to, to do all that would cost a lot more, I imagine. Okay, anything else on committee reports? All right, thank you, Amanda, for that report. 
And so planning and sustainability department, was there anything, Katie, you wanted to say before we got into the chief uh, sustainability officer? Uh, well, just to let you all know that we are in the process of reviewing the applications for the two senior planner positions that we're working to fill. So we're uh, hoping that all goes well and we have a couple of great people added to the team. Um, and just to build on the HAB strategy, uh, Amanda, I have seen a draft of the HAB strategy. So it is working its way to becoming a a draft for public consumption document. And I think the plan is to bring it to peak in, I believe in May, um, maybe even April, but probably May. And I think uh, in there, it does highlight uh, CSI <laughs> and uh, the data that they provide us um, for this important topic. That's it, Ann. Thank, thank you. I'm I now I'm just looking at my background, hoping those aren't invasive. Those are just really teeny plants. I'm like, I, I hope they're not invasive plants, but they're little plants I find in my yard sometimes. Dan, what do you think? You can't quite see them. I'm looking. Okay, they're they're really little. Um, so they're little. So what could they hurt, right? Um, so. <laughs> The, so let's get into the chief sustainability officer. We have a resolution um, ID 10017, chief sustainability officer budget and officer budget and position transfer. Would anybody like to move that? Annie? Yes. Can I ask Katie a quick question first? Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you. Katie, did we get a robust response to the posting on the two planning positions? I think we had 19 applications. Oh, that's pretty good. It's it's decent, yeah. It's, it's interesting, I have never used LinkedIn, I've never used a hashtag before, but I used both uh, to promote this. And we had over 350 views of that position and the Chief Sustainability Officer is already up around 260 views. So I think it's a great tool. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> and it's free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> great. Any other questions for Katie? Actually, 349 views because I viewed, I viewed it once. <laughs> <laughs> I don't You're know if that counts, apply, though. Jason. You can come on over to DPS. We're friendly. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. So, Chief Sustainability Officer Resolution. Would anybody like to move that? Deborah, seconded by Amanda. Okay. Uh, and uh, just, who would like to? Just, yes. And interrupt and just make sure that that's the revised version being moved. Yes, thank you. Is that a different ID number? No, it's the same ID number, just the dollar amounts. Okay. So we're moving the revised one. I believe that was the one on um, three fifteen that Brittany had revised and and put it in the budget or I'll put it in the agenda. Okay. So is that uh, the ones that people were moving and seconding? The revised one. Thank you. Further reminder, Kathy. Okay. And uh, who wants to talk about this, Jason? Was it you that wanted to discuss it or Katie? I think I, think I wanted to say I, I shared with you my update in terms of the reasoning why would the transfer is over and this this would uh, finalize it and shift the target over into uh, over to Katie's budget. I'm sorry, not the target, it would shift it over. It's a, it's a one time, a three year one time, so it shifted over to the planning. Okay. I'd just add, I, I think this will work well, uh, especially recruiting for the senior planner uh, focused on energy position. Um, I think the two of them would work well together and kind of form a little sustainability slash energy division, so to speak, uh, in my shop. So I think that'll be good. Okay, great. Any uh, comments or questions regarding this resolution? Okay, um, we're gonna do a roll call vote then. Amanda? Yes. Deborah? Yes. Dan? Yes. Dave? Yes. And I'm a yes, so that passes unanimously. Thank you everybody. Thank you for, thank you Jason and Katie and everybody else who worked on this. And then next is 
a the resolution number one zero 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 five acceptance of snowmobile grant for 2021 season can someone move that dan and da dan uh, moved dave seconded although it was pretty close there was three hands up at once and uh scott did you want to talk about this did you have your hand up to say anything yeah, I just this is our standard uh, process for basically we're the pass through for this. So this is the same type of thing we've accepted for several years now. It, we receive the money and then get it out to the clubs for the trail. I I do remember this one as as the pass through. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this resolution? Okay, ready for a vote? All righty, uh, so we're gonna vote on this resolution. Deborah? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Dan? Yes. Dave? Yes. Okay, and I'm a yes, so that passes unanimously. And then we have a presentation on the draft Tompkins County Hazard Mitigation Plan, and that's ID number 10002 on our schedule or on, on the on the packet and Scott, I believe that's that's uh you're gonna take the reins in this. I'll give you just a little bit of an overview. I know we've talked about this in the past, but this is um, an exciting point in this process. The um, an update we're we're very close to um, pushing this out for broader public review, which will be the talent of this week. I'll tell you more about that, but wanted to give you more of an update for kind of what to come. Um, so we're gonna fall shot here on the lake for you as an opener, uh, even though definitely in spring. Um, as a background, um, hazard mitigation plan, um, if we take a look at our uh, four phases of emergency management here, um, we know very well the kind of right-hand side here before and after a hazard event. We have our response and the preparation, of course, before. Um, but but what's, uh, what's less known, of course, is the left-hand side of this, uh, this puzzle here in terms of mitigation recovery. So basically mitigation is that stuff you do before the actual event happens um, to reduce future loss. These are, this is not only a good thing for us for um, reducing losses, but it's good governance too. Research shows that every dollar you spend, you're saving um, six and ultimately uh, in, uh, related to disasters. This all was really framed uh, back in 2000 through the Domestic uh, Disaster Mitigation Act that basically said, hey, you do one of these plans to minim uh, take a look at your risks and identify what you want to do to, to reduce your risk implement that. So that's that um, act that basically still frames this today. So what's nice is they push and, and incentivize you to work with other municipalities on this. So we do this as a certainly a multi-jurisdictional plan that affects all of us uh, together. It's kind of a nice way to kind of reconnect every five years to talk about where we're at as a community in terms of risk. So it, it certainly it's connected with mitigation. We talk a lot about the other phases, but it really is just on the mitigation front. There are other issues that come up that we have to identify. I got a little asterisk here for free, because as you probably remember, uh, this hazard mitigation plan I talked uh, earlier in the year about, this is the first kind of component to our broader resiliency and recovery planning effort that we're we're kicking off now or we're working on right now as well. So this is the first piece and then we'll work into these other pieces that are broader recovery stuff. So here's what's different from when we did this uh, a handful of years ago. Well, a couple of different things. Um, we're focused on eight key natural hazards. The mission the actually only uh, requires you to deal with natural hazards. We're focused on those. Last time, 2014, we, we had 22 natural and man-made hazards. I think we had the record in the state. We were kind of pushing a lot of things. We had a lot of things that were multi, kind of like we had uh, 
lake flooding and um, other types of uh, flooding, like flash flooding, ice jam. Those were separate hazards. Also, we had the uh, the, the the scare concerns related to gas drilling. A lot of hazards related with that, which fortunately were beyond. So we're we're focused on eight key, which I'll tell you more about it in a minute. We also talk more about what we're calling cascading hazards, like basically one thing leading to another, extreme temperatures leading to drought, severe storms leading to flooding, those types of things, and then beyond that. One of the other big things, each of the 16 municipalities have their own annex, their own separate like plan that they can use independently, which has been uh, difficult to advance, but I think it's gonna be much more meaningful and helpful, certainly as we're implementing things. We, of course, have a lot of new municipal reps. That's always a nice thing, too, to reconnect with people on this topic, both elected officials and staff. That's been really, the process is actually, I think, yeah, sometimes more beneficial than the actual. Uh, we also talked about this concept of lifelines. We're really concerned about our, of course, municipal buildings, wastewater plants, that type of thing. We also realize there's a real concern and benefit to these other related pieces that really help us kind of day to day. And we certainly saw that over the last year. This is just a makeup of kind of on the left here, you see that the folks on the key kind of steering committee front, we worked with the uh, Tetra. Scott? Uh, uh, oh yeah. Scott, you're you're breaking up a little bit. Do you want to try no no video? Oh yeah, let yourself? me let me take off that. Yeah, sorry about see that. See if that's uh, better. Let me see if that can help. video all right okay let's try that how's that sound in there man so far so good okay let's keep that rolling thank you okay so uh yeah so we have municipal officials too that these were from the municipality people that were selected to uh represent the municipality so these are this, a lot of folks involved um throughout the process we also have across our borders to um, our different county uh, reps and different stakeholders and citizens. We had a, a citizen survey that 120 folks um, also uh, participated in. We, we got some good ideas from that too, so that's great. This is kind of a layout for what the plan looks like. I won't go into too much of this, but basically we'll post each section of this uh, for people to review different details, but then we'll also uh, have the full plan for review too. These are the eight key hazards we're focused in on. Um, and we certainly talked about, uh, um, we've, uh, Amanda referenced HABs. We certainly recognize that as a hazard. And we've had interest on that. But of course, some of the other ones too that you would think of are really core concerns for us in our, our county for natural hazards. The big driver on this was, um, uh, this new set of funding called the BRIC funding that we've talked a little bit about in different circles. Um, this is the one, if you do the plan, you can make, you could be eligible for this uh, significant pot of uh, money. The other big piece though, too, I need to remind uh, all of our partners, we really want to look at this across funding cycles. So creative funding through different avenues. It's not just through FEMA that we help to get this work done. A couple different um, hazards. Uh, these are, I mean, we have the different hazards. Here. These are different actions. We have about 120 actions across the different municipalities. Um, most are things like, you know, we have a lot to deal with flooding, um, but we have things from every hazard here represented of different types. Just to give you a little sense of types of those hazards, uh, the municipalities have generally more specific hazards and then the county. So, just as an example, here's one from the city, one of the ones that they detailed of interest um, to deal with flood was their concern with the creek beds that flow through the city to think what could they do with those flood walls and also the, um, the, the, um, the backflow storm sewer outfall um, valves. It's something they're looking at um, trying to figure out how that could be addressed through this program. So that's an example, another example, there are wastewater plant there and the fire station there um, in the plane. So looking at that closer for what they can do to help to retrofit those spaces, that's a you know, pretty specific and pretty important um, action there too. We have 18 core county mitigation actions and I'll uh, encourage you to take a look closer at some of those um, when we'll post that, uh, which will be this week. Uh, but as an example, we have things like 
affecting the way we track hazard impacts uh, for the county, working with our IT partners and other folks to develop a system that will help all the municipalities to better track that for impact, but also for um, help to kind of set the grant funding cycle up to show, hey, here's the type of kind of damage we can kind of avert if we deal with this. Uh, another idea for our stakeholder interviews was um, non-emergency protective or resiliency hubs. So basically kind of like both, you know, temporary structures, but also uh, more permanent ones that are, you know, for places for people to uh, congregate when it's uh, an issue with a hazard issue, but not necessarily that like extreme case where you'd open a shelter. So that's something that we're looking at too, is what, what does that take? And what does that mean? So, that. so our process here has been is through this real strange year up and down and we're coming around here too. And um, this uh, later this week, we're at the exciting piece of for um, public review, which will be on Friday. We're doing some final touches this week on that. Uh, but really looking forward to sharing that with all of our different uh, municipal partners. We have a lot of interest in, in public uh, interest in this process. So this Friday, we'll have that up. And I encourage you to go to the county planning website um, onto the climate adaptation page. But I'm happy to talk to you more about that too, uh, or any questions you might have. Scott? Uh, yeah. can, can you go back to the page? Oh, oh thanks. I got it. All right. Which the, page are you interested in? The page where you had the bar graphs of the different uh, hazards. Yeah. Huh? Yes, that one. So is so the totals there. Are, are, are those events that have happened and over what period? No, uh, we have a lot of interesting detail about those different hazard events that um, we can talk to you more about too, if you like. These are just the, these are the number of different actions. So we have over 20 that deal with all hazards. And then we have a lot that deal with flooding. So we have, you know, most of our actions, about 45 okay. are flood based, uh, but we have all some right. there that come up and come on that. But, okay. Um, I, I, I get you. But you wouldn't, you won't be surprised that flooding is one of our uh, most concerning uh, hazards for sure. 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 That's uh, definitely. Okay. Um, Martha, you have a question. Committee, go first. I'll wait. Uh, Martha, I called on you, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks, Annie. Thank you, Scott. Um, you said it's public, going to be publicly available Friday. Is there a particular comment period, and then and then what happens? It's quite a process. It's a very very firmed up process from FEMA. Um, it needs to be posted for at least thirty days, and you know we take that review real seriously. Certainly, to to make sure that we have enough time to adequately capture people's um, questions and concerns. So we'll have a little bit of time after that to think about how we're going to deal with the input, and then we send it to FEMA for review. They uh, help us get it, get kind of identify any other issues we need to deal with, and then we bring it back, deal with it, and then adopt it locally. So uh, the the push here is why it was so important to move this forward. This this set for the next funding cycle for that big brick funding. So that'll be um, the tail end of the summer when that gets going. So it's a bit of a process still, but it's at least thirty days. We'll have that up for public review. And then you say you you revise it. Into the public review, you incorporate anything that makes sense. Okay, great. Right. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Um, yeah, that was kind of my question. But so, so then at some point, the legislature will have to adopt or accept or something. That's right. So, we'll ultimately, when we hear back from FEMA that we're covering everything we need to and we've addressed the public. Uh, probably uh, through peak to say that we want to formally um, accept and adopt this plan. And so once we do that, we're in good shape. Every jurisdiction also has to do that too. So we help to support that process, which um, is actually not as cumbersome as you think because they've been 
involved in the process throughout, but um, it still takes some some coordination to make sure they do that to make. So you kind of broke up at the end, but just to con like, so, so all of the municipalities have to adopt this plan or, but you said they each have their own plan as well. Right. It's one big plan with different annexes. So they need to adopt, we adopt our piece and they adopt their own section with the broader plan too. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you very much for going through this with us. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry for my breaking up here. I figure that out. That's okay. It's not only you, Scott. I was just think I kept I keep thinking this, but as long as we have Jason on here, I don't know if this would go through IT or if there's something that we can do, maybe just to send out to uh, to our employees like a a sheet to to say here's the different things to check for your internet. I mean, I'm lucky. I have a software engineer who likes to problem solve and troubleshoot to go through all the different things that it could be uh, with your internet. Um, so I don't know if there's some, I mean, certainly we, we don't have the staff to go and help each person with their, with their internet, but I know sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, you need a new router or the, you know, issues on your lines that the provider could, could, uh, could fix. So I don't know if there's, some troubleshooting sheet, or maybe that would go through government operations, but just something because this this does happen a lot. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it closer too. I mean, I have this uh, some off issues in my office too. It may be a more of a computer based thing, so um, I'll I'll take a look at it closer though. I was gonna say, in Scott's defense, he tried doing this from his office the other day and had the same issue. So <laughs> I think it might be your laptop. Right. <laughs> so it could be the computer. We'll check it out. Yeah. All right. Thanks, but yeah, overall, it's it's a challenging issue. Uh, any other questions or comments for Scott? I, I really appreciate Scott the you know going through the, your your presentation. You know, it really makes it you know manageable. This is a really complex issue, so having it in the little you know bites and and with the. Uh, with, with the uh, different diagrams and charts, that's, it's very helpful. It's still a lot for me to digest even, but uh, um, I'm really glad that you're presenting this to us and helping us with this. Martha or Katie? Katie, did you have something first? Uh, I just wanted to um, make sure that people knew this was kind of one of the positives of a, of a COVID cycle with uh, this plan is that we actually had better participation from our municipal partners than ever before. We had one meeting where I think there were 33 um, municipal uh, officials or uh, staff involved wow. in the call. So um, people were really engaged and, you know, obviously um, having, doing this in the middle of a pandemic raises the interest in dealing with, <laughs> with hazards. So uh, I think it's one of the best plans I've seen come out of the hazard mitigation process due to you know, Scott's work and Tetra Tech and they've done a really good job. I know it's been brought up for, in government operations about going forward. Can we do, you know, can we do something, some, some type of hybrid or something to allow people to participate more in our committees? And so maybe that's something across the board, figuring out how to uh, enable people to do both or or maybe have just, just Zoom meetings sometimes. I'm sure it saves, so much it's more accessible and for some people to be able to, to do it in this way and save so much time. Martha? Yeah, thanks very much for the second question. Um, Scott, on the list of participants, I couldn't remember if Cornell was on there. Ithaca College may be also important, but especially Cornell. I remember during the drought a few years ago, there were some serious concerns about Cornell's water source and connecting, trying to connect um, their source and Six, Six Mile Creek and Bolton Point all together. And um, so I, that made me realize they should, are they on there? Yeah, uh, Dan Moss from the um, Emergency Management is on our steering committee. Um, and he's, so he's involved with that, but also Chris Bordelame from Cornell um, has been involved in some of our recovery planning efforts. So they have been involved and yeah, that's an important player for especially how we interrelate. 
I agree. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Anything else there for uh, Scott? Well, thank you again, Scott, for, for this update. We really appreciate it. And I'm really glad to hear you had so much participation. You said 35 people? Uh, it, yeah, we, we've had some That's pretty incredible. big meetings. It's been great. We've learned some good things there. So yes, I'll, I'll reconnect with you in a few short months on this. So thanks again for uh, keeping engaged. Okay, now in, uh, so next, if you could work on a presentation on internet mitigation. <laughs> right. That could be your follow-up. <laughs> Sounds good. It's really challenging. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, next on our agenda is the forest policy proposal. So we had uh, something submitted and I apologize, uh, it wasn't clear in the agenda, but we had something submitted by uh, Dan, legislator Dan Klein, uh, a draft resolution and uh, a memo. And uh, so that, that is for discussion today. And then we also had um, comments on that from David Weinstein, who had worked on that uh, through EMC, had worked on that for almost a year, working on uh, um, proposed uh, forest policy for us. And then over the weekend, legislator Deborah Dawson uh, sent to peak members another uh, suggested draft resolution regarding uh, the forest. So I'm going to um, want to open this up for discussion. Uh, I think first, if Dan, if you'd be willing to say a little bit about uh, what you uh, submitted to the committee to look at, and then um, possibly Deborah, if you'd be willing to go next on um, what, what you uh, sent to us. So Dan, would you be willing to tell us about what you sent to us Thank and you wrote up? Thank you. Um, so first of all, I would like to say something that got said to me and a group of legislators about a month ago at the beginning of the reimagining public safety process as we, we first got our first look at the report. And that was uh, urging us to keep an open mind and to possibly take a little bit of a leap of faith. And I wanted to ask you the same thing in this process. Um, when I heard that about the reimagining public safety, it was helpful to me. I took half a step back and tried to look at it all with fresh eyes and, and hear it with fresh ears. Um, I had prepared a bunch of comments and I still have them ready, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give my little speech today for a couple of reasons. One, the main reason is because we're gonna be doing this again next month at peak. And then we're gonna be doing it at the legislature at some point. So um, I know what I wanna say. And if these, some of these topics come up today and I feel like I need to say some of it, I will, but I'm not gonna deliver a speech. Um, what I'm hoping is that we consider this a working meeting. I think this is the plan. This is a working meeting and we hammer out something that we can go forward with and that hopefully we can vote on it next month at peak. I particularly hope that happens for a couple of reasons. One is just because this is lingering literally for years. It'd be nice to get it off the plate. And the other specifically about next month's peak is that it falls in the week between Earth Day and Arbor Day. And I thought that would be a particularly opportune moment to um, begin to, to, to solidify what our, what our policy is. I also believe it'll be an inspiring act, um, certainly to me, hopefully to other legislators and to the public. And I don't know about you, but I think the public could probably use a little inspiration about this point. So having said all that, um, what I wanna do actually is not say anything about my resolution at all and focus on Deborah's resolution. And I have a lot of specific comments, suggestions, edit suggestions about Deborah's resolution. And I do have those written out. And um, when we, when, and when you say it's the right time to start down that list, I'm ready to do that. And I've given a copy of my suggested edits to Brittany, so she'll be able to follow along a little better. 
So that's where I'm at. When you're ready to start going through the um, contents of Deborah's resolution, let me know. Deborah, how, did, how does that sound to you? Do you want to? That's fine. Do you want to talk a little bit about your resolution? Yeah. Um, so I just remember when we first had to deal with this particular issue, the discussion of what was a old growth forest and what was, um, and whether there was evidence that these forests could ever be old growth forests. These were all topics that initiated a lot of disagreement and it was nasty. Um, and that was one of the reasons I think that we referred this to EMC. And I think David did a lot of work trying to address all the issues that are included in this decision and give us the science um, and explain the options and what the results of those things would be. Uh, and then he left it up to us, as he well should have, to make a choice about how we chose to manage our county forests. Um, and I know that this choice means a great deal to some of us, and particularly Dan and Amanda. Um, and I respect their passion and their concern that we leave things alone as much as we can. I don't disagree with that result at all. Um, and if that's the choice we wanna make, I think that's just fine. I just wanna be clear why we're making that choice. Um, you know, I, it seemed clear to me from the research that I did by myself when this issue first came up and from reading David's report and all of the stuff that went back and forth that these are secondary forests they're, they're not ever gonna evolve into old growth forests the way old growth forests are technically defined. Um, they can become forests with old growth characteristics and that would be great. Um, I just think that all of those facts ought to be put in our resolution so that people understand that what we're basing our decision on is to some extent a leap of faith, that it's gonna be better to leave things alone to the extent, to the greatest extent we can um, and let nature take its course. I don't think, you know, Dan, I, I, I know that you kind of feel like I did a bad thing to you. And that was not my intention. My intention was to achieve the goal that you have consistently pursued without creating any kind of disagreement over the science or anything else. Um, I, I actually was trying to be helpful um, and take into account you know, David Weinstein's understandable distress that it seemed like some of the whereases in your proposal specifically assert that this is or could be old growth forest when he went to such extreme lengths to point out that it wasn't. Um, I'm just looking for the result you want on a basis that will raise the least amount of conflict. That's all I got to say. Thanks, Deborah. I, I keep muting myself because um, 
Buttercup keeps crying. Uh, Amanda, you yeah. have your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Annie. Um, so several thoughts from my perspective. Um, first of all, thank, thank you to Annie for um, getting this on the agenda and, and having it as a discussion topic and, and being as clear as possible that we're not voting on it today. Um, and I want to thank Dan a lot because he has worked on this and we've talked about this numerous times over the past year. And it is something that's very important to me. And um, I appreciate the time that you've put in Dan and, and really thinking about this. And I also appreciate Deborah for, for stepping in with a different you know, coming from at it from a little different perspective um, and, and giving it a different spin, but ultimately getting the, the, res, the result that I, I want and I feel like is a compromise for, for all of us. And, you know, I, I'll fully admit I've been a little nervous about talking about this because I don't want it to be a conflict again. And it was very hard for all of us, I think, and it, it doesn't have to be. Um, I think that over the conversations that we've had privately or you know in small groups, like it seems like folks can get to a similar place um, and really be able to go forward in a in a compromise sort of way. And you know, I mean, I read David Weinstein's email to us, and and he said several times. If the legislature wants to do X, Y, and Z, that's up to you. And it is, it's up to us. Yeah. And I personally don't need to hear more facts or more data or more opinions. Like we did that. We did that for a long time. And, you know, I think Dan and I had talked a year ago about, about bringing forward a resolution then, but we didn't because COVID happened and it, you know, wasn't really the right time. So if that hadn't happened, we would have done it at the time. And so maybe in some ways it's good that we put it off because people could have this time to deal with other things and think about where you stand and kind of get to a different place. So um, personally, I would like to see, you know, this discussion go forward and, and just have a vote. You know, I don't, I don't think we need to relitigate. I don't think we need to... Oh, no you know, dive into all the details. We have, you know, we had what, 75 emails from the public. We have the EMC, they ha held public comment. You know, we have all of that. So I, I just hope that we can go forward. And, and I think what is, is in the proposed policy um, that, that Dan and I have talked about and that is in the resolution is, is, is great. And it does primarily leave the forest as it is with some selective cutting of the red pines to help sort of speed things up, but with no commercial logging. And there, there's no need for the county to do commercial logging. Um, and I'm, I'm fairly sure that a lot of people agree with that. So I'll stop talking now, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful at this point that we're talking about it and it, and it would be great to get, the, get it sort of out of off the books, so to speak. So. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Dan, I had a question. You said that you had some comments that uh, you sent to Brittany. Uh, were they sent to all of us or just Brittany? Um, I printed them out and handed it to her before this meeting so that she could, if, if we're gonna get into word editing, which I think we are, so that she could make notes. So no, I didn't email it to anybody. Okay. All right. Um, did you want to talk about your the the comments you had regarding the resolution that Deborah had written up? Yes, please. Okay. Hey, I hope everyone has their resolution handy because it's gonna be a lot of words here. Okay. Okay. So can you... it, just give everybody a second. Yeah. We're gonna be looking at uh, the resolution that Deborah. Uh, sent out and let's see, Deborah, or so, can someone remind us? Does anybody need time to find that? Okay. What? And if anybody knows the exact date and time that she sent that out? Yesterday. It was yesterday. 
I don't, I can't recall exactly the time. Okay. Was it Burrish? Yeah, I, I found it and there was a couple of responses, so. Okay, yeah, I have it open. I didn't know if other people did. Dave, do, do, do you have that? It was from Deborah yesterday. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at her uh, resolution that says uh, that the title of it is resolution adopting a minimally invasive policy for managing the Tompkins County Forest. Okay, so Dan, you had some some things you wanted to say, comment on? Go yes. ahead. Okay, thank you. To start with the fifth whereas, this is the one that says uh, whereas to address these objections and to assist. And um, I just, this is more like a correction than the rest of them are. Um, actually, the peak committee did not um, make that request. It was just the chair at that time. So to make it more accurate, this is what I would like to propose the wording to be. Whereas to address these objections and to assist the legislature in evaluating them, the unique natural areas committee of the Environmental Management Council, researched and presented the best scientific bases for the proposed amendments and objections. That works for me. Okay. Shall I keep going? Sure, I think what we'll just do if anybody wants to comment, since this, since this isn't uh, a resolution that's on the floor, we don't need to have approval of the first or seconder. So uh, if anybody has any comments, just chime in. Okay, Go ahead, Dan. You. Next one is for the very next whereas, the sixth whereas that begins in response to that request. Um, so for the same reason, I would actually suggest taking that phrase out. Um, so just, it would read, whereas EMC member David Weinstein, a Cornell University visiting science and researcher whose work focuses on best management practices to reduce forest sustainability to the impact of climate change, produced a report, the Weinstein report, of which, of which the EMC, let me pause there for a moment. So for all I've done so far is eliminate the word, the phrase in response to that report. Got it. Uh, the next part of it that I'm gonna change is that um, the report was not adopted by the EMC. Um, so let me suggest the wording that I think is more accurate and then we can talk about it. The Weinstein Report, of which the EMC approved its submission to the peak committee for its consideration. And I pulled that quote directly from the minutes of the EMC report. Of the, of How about the, the submission of which? Uh, of which the, can you please say it, say it please? The submission of which? It's better grammar. Okay. Yeah, I was having trouble with that grammar. Can you just repeat, may, may, give me a little more of the sentence, though? Well, um, let's see. The Weinstein report, close paren, the submission of which was approved. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And, um, so I, uh, Martha has her hand up, and I, and I had a question on this, this section. Martha? Yeah, I mean, it was, David might have been the principal author, but it was a whole committee. There were six or seven people whose names are on that report. So, um, I, so, because I, one of the things I sent yesterday afternoon after Deborah's was putting the title into that parentheses and, and making it clear it was the UN committee that produced the report. So, if, if this is where you know we're dealing with this level of detail, it really is. It was a committee report, and shouldn't be called the Weinstein report. It's the UN report. Yeah, I gotta say them. I mean, my understanding just from all the interactions with Brian and, and David and the other people on the EMC was that David was the laboring or this thing. Um, That's why I said he produced a report and then it was, you know, developed by the committee and approved by that committee. I think it's really unfair to put an individual's, an individual volunteer's name on something 
as the, the work of a committee. It was presented on behalf of the committee to the full EMC. I mean, I think that that's really the more appropriate way to, to talk about it. I, I do agree with, with, um, with Martha on that. I, I just put that. it, I just called it the Weinstein, Weinstein report to you know, recognize and acknowledge David's work, but that's, I don't care what you call it. I think no, you could put his name in there as, as uh, contributing it to, you know, a, a principal contributor to it, but also um, put in the, the UNA subcommittee. Right. Uh, I'm, I mean, I, I think, uh, I don't think we have to like fuss with the details of the, of the, the wording. The point is that, you know, to kind of, to call it, the UNA report in the subsequent, especially in the subsequent whereas is in all, and it really, to be a little bit more clear that it, he was not the only one involved in this. That's fine, Martha. I got no problem with that. Amanda? Dan, that's okay with me. Yeah, um, just, um, what was I gonna say? <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I was at the UNA committee meeting when they talked about this some of the committee members hadn't even read it. So that's just a fact. Um, it was David Weinstein's report, but technically the UNA committee did uh, uh, accept it and that's the title on the report. So that's probably what it should say. We should spell out what UNA stands for. Right. Um, and I also- I had that on what I sent Deborah on top of Deborah's yesterday. Okay. I also had a question, um, and I don't know if who can answer this, but I'm not actually sure that David is an actual member of the EMC. I think he might have been a consultant. I know he gets the EMC emails, but he doesn't live in Tompkins County, I don't think, or he's not. Well, yes, he does. No, oh, okay, well, he's not. He lives right next to the Freeze Road Bridge. He's not a voting member of the EMC, so. I have a CV, he's an associate member. Um, and I have other the rest of a CV if you want to see it. No, this is really not about David. Martha, I'm just confirming it does the the resolution does say that he's a member, and I'm just checking if anyone knows, and I can check with Reggie Teasley, who's the chair as well. You know? If we put if the wording was something you know that uh, the uni unique natural areas subcommittee or whatever the appropriate name is for them, you know, acknowledging the Again, I'm okay about whatever right. the wording is of, of the uh, the amount of contribution that David did. I think it actually all does. Do, uh -huh. All you need to do is take out the the words EMC member in that whereas. Okay. He's still a Cornell University visiting scientist. He's all of that stuff, but I think unless somebody says he's actually a voting member, then I'm wrong. But. I that's, I'm just well, if he's an associate member, we can say he's an associate member. Okay. He's been on the UNA subcommittee since 2011. Great. Okay. All right, Dan, with that little detour, why don't you <laughs> carry on? The 11th whereas. This is the one that starts on February 12, 2020, the Caroline Town Board. Okay, I, just to clarify, so for people following that, on, on my, uh, when I'm put a, seeing it on the computer, it's on the start of the second page. Yep. Um, so I would like to add a little more to the um, quote from the resolution that they passed. So it starts out exactly the same, the first quote that runs through erosion and cost to the county and town of Caroline. And then I would add comma and quote, proforestation will sequester quantitatively more carbon over the critical next few decades than cutting and regrowing forests, close quotes. So just to be clear, that quote is from the Caroline Resolution. So that's, you know, it's attributing it to them. And that is what they say. I don't have strong feelings one way or another. Does anybody? That's Martha. great. Martha? First off, isn't it 20, 
21, not 2020? No, it was in 2020. Oh. Didn't you, didn't you just tell us recently that they had just passed a resolution? No, I told you that the Danby Town Board also took its public land and, and just declared it to be old growth. It seems like the people out in the town, county are comfortable with the term old growth. So, um, right, I understand David hasn't been at those board meetings. Um, I just want to say yeah, that actually, yes, yeah. this, this issue about um, sequ uh, sequestering carbon, this went through David's a lot of David's materials that this MUMA or whatever move this report that was, I'm sorry, I'm juggling all the papers here. The main report that, that you cited in your resolution, Dan, was comparing things that we weren't planning to do. We were never going to clear cut and plant new trees or anything like that. Um, and so that there was actually a, a different, it was apples to oranges. So and I think in the interest of trying to, to get something here that is less controversial and debatable. And if this is really about getting the action that I think we can all agree on, I would find that confusing and not helpful. If the Caroline Town Board did that a year and a half ago, then that's fine, that's up to them. The, the point is, I think, not necessary to add, not helpful to add. Well, that's why I took it out. I wasn't clear about how, um, how much that added to the resolution and how that fit in with the various criticisms that David had provide us provided us with about the applicability of proforestation and questions about carbon sequestration. But, you know, I don't, I don't understand enough to say strongly one way or another. I just wanted to avoid controversy. So I leave it to the committee to decide what it wants to do. Um. So it sounds like that could possibly be adding something in that could be um, controversial or, or debated. So let's. I, I guess, I, I mean, A, controversial or not, whatever. The Caroline Town Board said, and I, I ask you if, if the Enfield Town Board or the Town of Ithaca Town Board or the Town of Dryden Town Board submitted a resolution that was aimed at the county and the county decided to edit out one of their phrases. Do you think that that would be fair to your town boards? They wanted to communicate that message to the Tompkins County Legislature. They did, that was their intention. Martha? Um, we, we could put the whole resolution in here, but we're not, and we don't usually do that. So I. I don't think that's necessary. Their whole resolution is on record. People can go find it. I don't think that's really necessary here. I mean, I think we're trying, Dan, to get to a win-win situation. It would be really nice not to look for inflammatory things that are gonna make people uh, feel uh, unsettled about this whole project. I'm glad you're in favor of not being unsettled and not inflammatory, Martha. I would like to take the message Caroline Town Board asked specifically to be delivered to the Tompkins County Legislature and put that, that, that sentence in there. The Caroline Town Board specifically asked that to be in there. It's in their resolution, which is directed to us, to the Tompkins County Legislature. Okay, well that, I, I think for, um, for us doing a resolution, we can pick and choose, quote and pick whatever you know um, we want to put in there. So, um, you know, that's going to su support or make our point. Not that we want to cherry pick, you know, things and ignore other things, you know, that um, that are 
the op, you know, proving the opposite or, or not supporting it and or taking things out of context. So um, I'm leaning towards not in including that because I'm not sure I, you know, I, I'm not 100% that I ag agree with their, um, their, uh, that, that part of their statement, but I feel like I, I can, you know, what, what I have, what I see in here is, is, uh, I, I feel comfortable with. Uh, Amanda, sorry. Um, I would just say that we're not actually voting on this right now. So we can, you know, people can keep their inflammatory comments uh, for later. And maybe D Dan can send a suggestion of what he wants. Martha could send a suggestion of what she wants. And the committee will vote on it next month. And people can have time to just chill out a little bit. Well, I don't know as anybody's getting inflammatory, but um, so we don't agree on that one right now. So why don't we just, um, I do, a, you know, concur with Amanda saying that, you know, we don't agree now. So let's just move on. We don't have to agree today. So thank you, Amanda. Shall Go I? ahead, Dan. Okay, thank you. Next one is the 13th, whereas, this is the one that starts out, whereas at this point in time, Tompkins County. Um, so, I thought about this one a lot. I'm not sure where that idea comes from that those are our primary interests, but I'll, I'll, I'll accept that for now. But I do wanna say this, that I don't think deer predation should be in there. Um, because um, although I am concerned about deer predation is a real issue, I'm not sure that rises to the top of, I'm not sure what, of, of what list we're even be talking about, but that also the um, methods for controlling deer predation are, um, would, would have a lot of debate in, the, in and among themselves. So um, here's what, I wrote, I changed that in a little more. So let me read what I would suggest. Whereas at this point in time, Tompkins County's primary, primary interests are to protect the county forest from invasive plant species. I would like to insert the word plant by the way. Okay. And, and the negative impacts of climate change and to preserve them for the benefit of a diversity of plant and animal species and for the appreciation and enjoyment of its current and future residents, that's all what's in there currently. And then I would add, and to establish and protect a significant area of old growth forest, comma, the rarest piece of biodiversity in Tompkins County. No, it's not old growth forest. Okay, I'll, let me read it again so you can get the right tense. To establish and protect. So establish is not a present tense words. A forest with old growth core characteristics, Dan, how about that? No, no that, that would not be acceptable to me. Um, we, we can get into that characteristics debate if you want, and I, I guess we need to. So we can, you could throw the word in there for now. What about the rest of the sentence? I'm fine with the rest of the sentence. The, the deer predation thing, I just took that out of our, our current um, our current forest management plan, the landowner goals section. I just tried to combine those into that particular wary as, and it included controlled deer pressure, but it's not that important to me. I don't really care about that, but um, yeah, the old growth forest thing, that's the nub of the controversy, Dan. Well, shall we talk about that a little bit? Sure. Right. Um, I just want to say first that, uh, you know, um, in, in reading the previous, um, the report uh, given uh, to us uh, from the EMC, uh, that, that, was, that was a big, huge thing that they talked about. I went to several presentations and uh, 
So I would be more inclined to put uh, old growth characteristics. And I see two hands up, Deborah and Martha and Dan. Uh, so then Dan, if you wanted to talk about that. All right, only Martha's hand. So Martha, you're next. Thank you, Annie. Um, I think the, <coughs> sorry. The reason for leaving deer predation in, and I think we could list a whole bunch of reasons a whole bunch of goals that we might include in, in a list here, but <clears throat> the reason to mention deer predation goes to the second resolved about um, leaving the trees, felling the trees and leaving them down. And because in, in the report, that was one of the, you know, big benefits of doing that so that it would protect any hardwood saplings um, from the deer. It would make it harder for the deer to get into that area and, um, and eat the sapling. So that would be a, a proactive measure we could do that would support development of the, the hardwoods. Uh, so I think, I, I don't hear any reason to leave, to take it out. I think there's reason to leave it in. Any other comments on that section? Well, and I certainly agree about the question of old growth forest versus forest with old growth characteristics. I think that, that was uh, an extremely strong and important message and, you know, came from the scientists. So I really, I agree with what Deborah said. Yeah, if I may, I put my hand back up. I mean, I, I don't want to fight or die on the hill of deer predation one way or another. Um, but, you know, the whole nub of the battle royale that we had last time was over old growth forest, whether it was old growth forest, whether it could ever be old growth forest, blah, 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 blah. I don't want that fight again. We're just deciding what we're going to do now. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why we can't reach a compromise on this verbiage that gets us to where you so desperately want to get, which is hands off. I'm okay with that. Why is this particular verbiage so important? I guess I would throw the question right back to you. Why is it so important to put the word characteristics in there? Because we've been told in an extensive report, citing numerous sources, that that's not going to happen. It's like scientifically not correct. Can you, can you please find the spots and reports where it says that? Because I have a pretty different interpretation. And if we just leave out the, the terminology, then, it, you know, if, if the main thing is that we want to say that we're not, we're not wanting commercial logging on here, let's just try and stick to that. Because if we're adding in more things that uh, other people are disputing. So just, just think about that. Uh, Dave, you had your hand up. Yes. Uh I guess I have to agree with Deborah and everybody else. Uh, I don't think it's ever going to be old growth forest per se. It will be close, but I don't believe it'll ever be old growth forest. Uh, so I'm in favor of uh, not stating it that way. Okay, ready to move on? Annie, I'm going to look to find the uh, reference in the report, but let's move on meanwhile, because it's a long report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I, I will move on. Just make one more comment about the old growth and I'll keep going, which is if you look in David Weinstein's um, comments, you'll see that he defines old growth as is written in a paper by D'Amato and Canzaro in 2007. For some reason, he decided that is what the definition of old growth is. So it's not like the world thinks um, everyone agrees with what old growth is. He, 
he picked one paper that he decided to find all good for him. Fourteenth, whereas. This is the one that starts. Whereas, although the legislature can neither anticipate the conditions that may exist in the future. I just wanted to add in um, where it says, uh, in as natural as possible with minimal human intervention, that's already in there. And then add, and without commercial logging, which is just repeating something else that's already been stated in the resolution, comma, with the intent to allow the forest to mature into old growth forest. No. Okay. No, I'm not okay with that either. The last, very last part you said. All right. But the other part sounds fine. Um, um, give me just a second. I got a little lost in the papers here. I will say that there is a, a part of the report that says. The New York State Strategic Plan for State Forest Management defines old growth forest as, quote, forest with an abundance of late successional tree species, at least 180 to 200 years of age, in a contiguous forested landscape that has evolved and reproduced itself naturally, with the capacity for self-perpetuation, arranged in a stratified forest structure consisting of multiple growth layers throughout the canopy and forest floor, featuring canopy gaps formed by natural disturbances creating an uneven canopy and a conspicuous absence of multiple stem trees. So that's not D'Amato and Catanzaro. That's the New York State Strategic Plan for Forest Management. That's good, Deborah. Is there anything in that list you just read that you don't think will happen on, the, on our forests? Well, I'm getting to the part, I'm still looking for the part where he says, that a secondary forest, I know I've seen this, doesn't evolve into an old growth forest by definition, but can evolve into a forest with old growth characteristics. I feel like the definition you just read, which is one definition of old growth among many, will apply to our forest. And I don't see why, why it's so controversial to say that. I just don't see it. Well, you obviously think it is because you're arguing about it. Well, that's what I'm asking. Well, and we, and, and some of us. Tell me one characteristic in that list that we are, that our forest will not achieve. Tell me one. Otherwise, so Dan, 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 also we don't, some of us don't see why, you know, saying um, old growth characteristics you know, we're putting in the word, the term old growth. So some of us also don't see why that you don't like that term. So I don't know if you want to speak to that or- Yes, I can. I mean, oh, you know, if in the big scheme of things down the road, somebody's looking back in this and they're seeing that that's our intent to go towards old growth or old growth characteristics, I think they're going to they're going to get the point when they look at this ten years, a hundred years down the down the road, and the science will have possibly evolved. Well, the reason that I don't um, like the word characteristics is because some of the characteristics in old growth forest are big trees and pit and mound topology, meaning uh, there's there's holes in the ground and then there's little hummocks, hillocks next to them where the trees fell. So those are two of a, of a longer list of old growth characteristics. So one could go into a forest and cut down a whole bunch of trees and the rest of them would get bigger. So it would achieve that goal. And you could push them over with a bulldozer, the smaller trees, and that would accomplish the goal of having pit and mound topography. So you have successfully managed for old growth characteristics in that circumstance. But in my opinion, that is not an old growth forest. That is not a natural progression. Okay, thank you. We have uh, Amanda and then Martha. Um, I was just gonna have one more thing about the resolution if 
when Dan is done with his list, but I can wait. <laughs> it's okay. Just, yeah. On another another part of it or overall. Okay. Yeah, I have one from something up above. I had a question on, uh, but I'll wait till the end. And I'd like to wrap this up at 315 or sooner so we can uh, discuss uh, our overall goals for the committee. Martha? Um, yeah, I just, I, I do have something else on the, the second mass result as well, but um, on this issue, I just think it's, it's um, the whole thrust of the UNA report was the difference between the old growth characteristics and old growth forests. So if Deborah's having trouble finding a specific statement, it's because it's the whole report. Dan, was there another section you wanted to comment on? Yep. Um, 16th, whereas. Um, I'm having a little trouble with my own notes. Uh, I, I did this this morning because I just got the resolution last night. So I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. I, I've just got 14 whereas. You're still on Deborah's? Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's that. maybe that's part of my confusion. Maybe this is. Uh, okay. This, I'm sorry, I'm on the resolve now. Oh, okay. Well, I assume this is the first resolve. Tell me if I'm right here. That says the Tompkins County establishes a policy of allowing its publicly owned lands. Is that the first resolve? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the very next word in that, the very next phrase is and accessible forest lands. Do you see that? Yeah. I believe we should remove that because at this time, the county forest is not open to the public really. And that, that would be a policy decision to be made in the future. Um, and then where it says- Can you hold on a second for that one there? So you're saying resolve, so it says now resolve that Tompkins County hereby establishes a, a policy. So you want it- Of allowing it's publicly owned, it already says that. And then I would eliminate the next two words and accessible. So, um, why, why would you say, take that out? Because it could Not be a, saying that that's our intent to allow it to be accessible in the future. We, we don't know that. We don't know if we're doing that. I would be in favor of that, but we, that, we are not setting that policy right now. Right? <laughs> we don't have that policy. We don't know. It's right now it's posted and um, you know, there's legal implications and that, that requires further study. Okay, so that would be a, like a separate policy. Okay, I see that. I, I understand that now. Thank you. Amanda? Well, yeah, I mean, some of it, like you'd have to define what it, what is accessible, you know, like some of it is on the road. Some of it you have to hike a ways to get in. Like, I don't think we want to, we just want to say it's publicly owned and publicly owned, by the way, should be hyphenated. <laughs> Thank you, editor. <laughs> There's a few other uh, editing things I could do, but I'll refrain right now. <laughs> but you could add them. You could add them later. S yeah. Send them, send them in. Commas and stuff. Okay. So so now so I I are are you okay with that, Deborah? I'm I'm I'm. Yeah, I, I don't care. I'm the only reason the only reason I put that in is because I took the wording in the very first whereas from Dan's um, from Dan's resolution that talked about publicly accessible forest lands. But if you want to take accessible out, I don't care. I think and, that, it, and that makes sense to me. Okay, Dan, continue. Okay, so still on that same resolve. It goes on to say with minimal human intervention as necessary to control deer, manage invasives and maintain safe hiking, skiing and hunting access. So um, here, I'll, in a moment, I'll give you the wording of what I would like to replace that with. I would like to replace it with a much longer list of possible um, management options. We're not determining them at this point. Um, we're saying what could be in there that would be compatible with what we're doing, but each one of them requires some, some amount of planning, some amount of thought and um, decision-making. So here's how I would word it. Resolve the Tompkins County hereby establishes a policy of allowing its publicly owned forest lands in Newfield and Caroline to evolve naturally without 
commercial logging, sorry, without commercial logging activities and with minimal human intervention, you know, that's the same so far. And with management practices that could be considered including, but not limited to, invasive plant species management, control of deer, hiking and cross country ski trail construction and maintenance, erosion control, selling of carbon offset credits, seed collection, vernal pond installation, replanting, reintroduction of blight resistant American chestnut trees, cutting of a small number of trees that may endanger a road, power line or other human infrastructure, research, education, recreation and hunting. So there's a list of things that we could consider in the future. And that's from your resolution, Dan, right? Yes. Fine, I just tried to make it a little pithier, but that's fine. I, 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 uh, I like Dan's le less pithy uh, list there. Okay. Dan, could you, could you read the beginning? Could you read, with only minimal human intervention, then what? Um, Without commercial logging activities and... Minimal human intervention and with management practices that could be considered including, but not limited to, and then there's the whole list. Shall I go on? I'm ready. Okay, um, I guess it's the next resolve um, where it says further that the area, that the areas of the county's forest that currently contain softwood plantations. Right. Um, I would do, have all the same and then add in at the end, comma, and in a multi-year timeline that ensures that canopy openings are minimized in order to reduce the opportunity for invasive species to take hold. And I'm pretty sure this is David Weinstein's uh, recommendation also. Yeah, I think that's excellent, Dan. Can you say it again? One for pith. Yeah, so it's the, it's the same resolution as exists. And then at the end, there'd be a comma that says, and in a multi-year timeline that ensures that canopy openings are minimized in order to reduce the opportunity for invasive species to take hold. All right. Um, I would like to add in a whereas, and I would propose this as the third whereas, which was pulled from my, um, my resolution. And it's a quote from the Tompkins County Legislature from 2010 when the legislature passed a resolution about this very same land in regards to fracking. So it's a direct quote, but I'll, I'll just read it quickly. Whereas development for oil and gas has been eliminated. Sorry, that's not the quote yet. You'll get to the quote in a minute. Whereas development for oil and gas has been eliminated as a possibility on the county forest lands by a resolution of the Tompkins County Legislature on December 21st, 2010, which was passed to prevent, quote, fragmenting our forest lands in ways that damage their values, including threatening water resources, creating edges that impair habitat value for forest dwelling species, removing natural vegetation cover, and allowing invasive species to become established, unquote, and also advocated, quote, rather than allowing fragmentation of county-owned lands and forests, we should be increasing our acreage of unbroken forest lands, unquote. That's a good one too, Dan. You're saying put that, that's in the main packet you said it was like the fourth, you're saying make that into the third one? Third, yeah. That's, that's my proposal, yes. And then my final thing, I guess I know already that you're not gonna accept this, is that I'd like to, to retitle the whole resolution. My proposed title would be resolution adopting a minimally invasive policy. Oops, sorry, that is the current. My one would be adoption of a policy to allow the county owned forests to mature into old growth forests with minimal human intervention and without commercial law. I know that's not acceptable. 
That's it. Those are all my comments. Thank you for your patience with all those details. Okay, Amanda. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think the title could, something along those lines could be good, um, but I'd have to look at it again, wordsmith. Um, I know they're shaking their heads. You don't want old growth forest, but something along the lines of managing without commercial logging for with minimal human intervention. Anyway, um, the, the one thing I just wanted to clarify um, I feel like in Dan's original resolution, it said the 2007 forest management plan, but Deborah has changed it to 2008. And I guess we just should clarify. I'm pretty sure it was 07. It was written in 07. It may have been adopted in 2008. I never looked that part of it. Yeah, I, I think it I think was, it was 2008 and that's why I used that date. Okay. I think so too. Clarifying. And I guess I'll just, since I have a moment, you know, I, I, I really, I know people have really strong feelings about using the word old growth. And honestly, I could go either way because if, if this is what comes out of it and this is the, the, the management policy that we're choosing, this is what I want. And I really hope that folks can just take a step back and, and like, everyone not be so dug in that you can't just give a little and you know the the hope really is that there will be minimal intervention and that's what it sounds like people want that's what i want so um i have a comment and then we'll go to martha and deborah so um First, just a small thing. Let me find it in one of the whereas is, see, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth whereas. I think Dan had suggested taking out the uh, section whereas in response to that request. Did you yeah. ask? Because why? he said there wasn't a request. We, we never asked them? Um, Peek never voted on it. Peek never voted on it. It was the, the chair at the time. A chair, a committee chair can certainly ask such an advisory board that you could say yeah. requested by the committee chair. They can ask, but, but the technically the wording as it is, isn't correct. Well, then why can uh, I, I'm, uh, I would like to put in requested by the chair of, of Peek if it was called that at the time. Just call it the chair of the legislatures. That's fine. That would go in the fifth whereas then. Of, of yeah. The well, it's actually the sixth because Dan added the one about the oh, right, the right. good addition. Right, uh, and, um, and thinking some more and getting some feedback um, some emails that we're getting feedback from some EMC members right now. I really um, uh, like us to consider in the, let's see one, in the sixth, whereas I guess that'd be the same one that I was talking about. Uh, I, I would really like to make sure that this uh, talks about the the, the UNA and the EMC versus um, members in particular, because the feedback that we're getting is that they, um, I think it diminishes the work of that uh, subcommittee and the committee as a whole to be pointing out one particular person and uh, kind of leaves that one person open for um, criticism, especially if we don't like the report. Um, you know, if you do want to name David Weinstein, I would, you know, I would, I would really, I, 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 so I'm just getting feedback that there were a lot of people that put work into this and it diminishes the work of the other people. So if we could 
you don't have to do it today, but think about some other way to make sure that we're saying that um, how members of EMC would prefer that that be worded. I think that's um, respectful to them. Uh, Deborah and then Martha. Oh, you know, at this point, I've totally lost the thread. Um, listen, I'm not the enemy here. Um, there's no reason to be, for anyone to be angry at me for. I don't think anybody is, Deborah. Well, it's not well, the impression I'm getting. Um, you, you know, I'm open to any suggestion that makes this a better resolution. I'm just not open to the notion that we're going to talk about old growth forest. Um, I did find some wording in this report. It is important to distinguish forests that have always been in forest, regardless of disturbance history, referred to as primary forests and secondary forests that have developed on land that was once cleared of forest for farming or have been or have had a sizable percentage of large trees removed at one time or another over the past 200 years. The removal of all or most forest plants from sites in the process of farming has major implications for the regrowth of new forests. And then on the next page, um, most forest scientists discussing old growth stands are referring to a tiny subset of primary forests. Here in Tompkins County owned, all of the county owned forests are secondary or post agricultural. However, secondary forests may develop old growth characteristics discussed in the next section. I think the implication of that's pretty clear. You, a secondary forest may evolve into a forest with old growth characteristics. It will not evolve into an old growth forest. All I'm asking here is that we go with the science as it's been explained to us. Deborah, what page is uh, Well, I don't know exactly what page that's going to be on, Martha, because I'm okay. off um, the 12 26, 2019 draft. Uh, on, in that draft, it's on page 35 and 36. Thank you very much. Okay. Martha, your hand's up. Are you? Sorry, Martha. Did you have a new something hand? you want to say? It's a new hand. It's brand new. Okay. Tell us your brand new thought, Martha. Actually, yesterday I sent it to you, so it can't be brand new. But so, um, so I really appreciate this conversation, and and um, you know, I I think we could get a lot done here if we kind of move, try to move forward. So the second resolved, and this is what I sent yesterday, after Deborah sent her draft. I'm, I made a couple of changes, but mostly the main one was in this second resolved. And I was just trying to make it a little bit more clear about what was intended about the selective thinning. So, um, and since we've given up on being crisp and pithy, I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's worth doing so. So what, I, what I'm doing is this, resolved further that add here, in order, to accelerate, in order to accelerate development of the county's forests that currently contain softwood plantations, now in parentheses, I put conifer or red pine. That was what was in the report. So that's what they also called, just to be a little more clear. Uh, that currently contain softwood plantations, parentheses, conifer or red pine, back into Northern hardwood stands comma, their original tree composition, comma, the sections of county land so identified in the UNA report, comma, which are all in the town of Newfield, comma, 
shall be selectively thinned, not maybe, but shall. And I didn't, um, I didn't address timeline, but Dan's addition here of a multi-year timeline um, makes sense. So, but I, I, so most of that is just sort of clarification and explanation. I did replace may with shall. I thought if we're gonna try to settle this whole issue and let the planning department begin the process of whatever the implementation is, I thought it'd be preferable to say, this is what we want, that it shall happen and not like throw it up to, well, maybe or maybe not. So, and, I, and so that was, so that one word is the main issue here, but um, there's more explanation, the more detail in the rest of it. Uh, so with, I see Deborah has her hand up, um, but I would like to see uh, if Katie or Scott have, any uh, comments on putting that in like that? Yeah, I, that's what I was gonna ask about because it may, may versus shall, shall makes it mandatory. And I know there was an issue um, when this initial amendment came up um, that, that there were some things that, that DPS could have done under the forest plan, but hadn't done. And I don't wanna put y'all in a position where you're required to do something if you don't think you can do it. Yeah, I guess I would say if you wanna use the word shall, then it should be a very short list of what you want us to do. Um, I mean, if you want us to develop cross country ski trails, that's a very different request than if you want us to enter into a carbon market, if you, you know, there's a lot of different yeah, no. things there. Now, let me explain. It, it's only talking about the thinning the selective thinning. This this resolved only talks about the thinning. Yeah, go ahead and read that part again because I didn't expect that, that Scott and Katie were hanging on our every word. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna skip a lot of the details. So uh, resolve further that the county's forest that currently contain softwood plantations um, shall be selectively thinned by directionally felling trees without building logging roads or removing the felled trees. And in a multi-year, this is the part that Dan added, and in a multi-year timeline that ensures that the canopy openings, da, 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 da. So it doesn't prescribe like by such and such a date, you know, it's, it's open-ended. It just says that, you know, I could have said something like when it fits into your work plan or, or something, okay, but I didn't want, so it, I was just trying to make it be definitive that, the, that this plan includes this thinning as we- that would, Okay, so Scott and Katie, do you wanna comment on that? I mean, I guess if that is truly the direction of the legislature that you want us to have that happen, then yeah, I think it does make sense to be very clear that's what you want. And then we'll probably come with an over target request to hire someone to do that. Um, it's a little tricky, just so you all are aware. Um, we're entering into forest management of a different nature. And so our kind of go-to forestry consultants probably wouldn't do this. So I don't really know what this it's going to take some work um, thinking through what qualifications we want to see for people who can identify which trees to to fell over a multi-year contract and what kind of insurance requirements we want them to have and uh, you know all, all of that is kind of new territory so um, that's I guess that's those are my top of the head thinking about it. Scott do you have anything you want to add on it? I think it's a, the good direction. It makes sense, but, but you're absolutely right. I mean, it's a different direction. I mean, we were originally working under this covering costs direction um, from the original plan, right? But this is this is different, um, and it it I think it does take a different skill set. Um, I don't think it's insurmountable, but yeah, it takes a different approach. But I think it I think it makes sense. And how about how about this? And I and I um, we gave up on covering the costs. 
down the, um, what if it says something like, um, shall develop a plan to do the following, selectively thin by directionally felling, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, in other words, it's not like saying this is how to do it, but this is like, come back to the legislature with a plan. These are our goals, selectively thinned, leave the trees, no logging roads, canopy. So sort of come back you, with how that would, how you would do that, that sort of thing. Do you need us to be that specific to say that you're going to develop a plan or is that inferred? I actually would, to be honest, prefer just to release an RFP or an RFQ, find out who's out there, find out what their plans are for it and just enter into a contract with somebody over a five year time period and have their expertise guided by this policy statement of what you want to accomplish. I don't really see doing a full forest or, or you know, a plan, so to speak, as how we think about a plan at, at right. least, but Good be point. kind of the yeah. scope of work of a contract. Okay, right. so here's take the that thing. Out. This, this, this came out of the UNA report, right? There's like, here's another option that could be done. And a lot of us went, oh, that sounds good. So how do we take that and turn it into the legislature says to the staff, you know, make that happen. Ha ha that's the right. goal. Amanda has been waiting to say something. Yeah, thank you. I think that what we're talking about is, is a separate conversation. I think if we want to have cross country ski trails, if we want to hire somebody to deal with invasive plants, if we want to, whatever, the whole list of things that Dan said, that's something that at some point the legislature needs to have a resolution and say, we want to do this planning department, you go for it. I, I don't think we're trying to say that in this resolution, at least I'm not. I think there's there's a whole range, let me finish Martha, um, of things that we could possibly want to do. And I had the same question, you know, how do we go from this policy to telling the planning department, this is the time to do this. And I think that, you know, this is one of this, this uh, thinning of the red pines is one of the main topics of the conversation a year ago. And so that's why it's in this now. But I think we might need to say something to the effect of at the legislature's direction or discretion, such and such will happen, you know, when the legislature decides, because as we've all been saying, we don't want to put more on, on you know, the planning department's play, like, especially right now, you know, you guys have so much going on. I think yeah. I would be more comfortable if we defined that as not, not as shall, but as okay. may at some point at the legislature's discretion or whatever. So instead of trying to figure that out right now, how they're going to do it or when they're going to do it, let's just get through this. And then we can talk more about the peak committee can talk every month if they want about this topic and you know try to to figure out well what okay so here's the things we've defined that we really want to do when do we want to do that you know i'd love to put a hiking trail in but we need to talk about that i th i think the issue of hiking trails or skiing trails or whatever those are additional future this goes to the exact issue of the forestry plan, of what are we gonna do with the forestry plan? Remember, as Scott said, the last plan we had talked about covering our revenues, for example, and this is not an add-on. This is the definition of what do we do about the trees? And and I, I don't think this is, you know, eventually we can think about this again when we have time, when there's no pandemic, I, I think, this is core to, to the solution, to the resolution of this whole debate. I think the other stuff, yes, when there's when there's bandwidth, you know, trails and whatever else, absolutely. But but this piece, I think, should be settled, or else. It okay, I'm going to interrupt you, Martha, because it's three thirty, um, and so. Uh, 
why don't is if Katie or Scott wanted to say something really quick about whether they thought we should put may or shall one one last thing I guess it's it's yeah. really up to you all what you want to do if you if you want to say you know in three years time the planning department shall or may oh wait, shall um, do this you could put a time limit on that you could say shall now and then we'll try to work it into our next our work program next year to do it. Um, yeah, that's all. I don't want to talk anymore because I know you're running out of time. Okay, well, thank you for your input. So we'll work on this. Uh, I see uh, Dave and Deborah. So Dave, you haven't chimed in as much. So Dave, Dave first and then Deborah. Dave, you're on mute. All right. <laughs> uh I don't like the idea of saying that we shall. I think uh, leaving it as a as a may is a good thing. No matter what we do with a softwood forest, it's a loss leader. We're not going to make any money on it. It's going to cost us money to have the work done, uh, and we have to get somebody that knows what they're doing to do do the selective cutting so that we don't open the the umbrella up. So. Uh, I'm I'm just not in favor of uh, doing that right off the bat. I think we need to talk about it some more, and maybe get some more information on people that do this and what they think about it before we make a decision. So that's my two cents. Thanks, Dave. De Deborah. Yeah, I just I just go back to the mandatory versus optional. I think if we put May in there, I mean, I would love it if you all had a plan and you could get started and do it. You know. 10% every year going forward, but you may not be able to do that. It may not be financially viable. Um, it may take you a while to find that person. I think if we put the permissive may in there, that allows you to move forward with that if and when you can. It doesn't require you to do anything. And it also doesn't necessarily require that you come back to the legislature in order to undertake a program. Right. So, um, although I, if it's left as may, they probably would to say, Hey, you know, we're, we oh, well, sure they, would, but they don't have right. to. I, I, right. So if I could just wrap this up, it sounds like they, you know, that it could be something that's looked into, uh, possibly early next year. If we, it, it could be the type of thing, if we're looking at trails and different things that might, might be all wrapped in together, you know, um, because that's going to take some work, um, Martha. If if it's if it's something that can wait, or we can take care of by email, but it, we're over time now. I know. I just I, one of my question is, um, without this, does it does this tell staff? Does it, Katie and Scott? Does this say to you, this is what the legislature wants, or or what? I mean, I don't. I, my question is, I don't. I don't. I'm if it says may, you, are you asking if it says may, does this yeah. allow them I, the ability to do that? Or I'm or trying to remove ambiguity here. Yeah, I actually was just looking for a draft 2022 work program ideas to put it <laughs> to uh, list it as uh, something for staff to talk about whether that's something we want to start in 2022 or we don't. We have other things on our plate, but we, we kind of keep running drafts of just ideas that we could talk about. So we would do that. All right, I will take a stab at revising this to try to try to capture what you're what you're telling us. And we'll, if this is coming back to peak next month anyway, I, I'll, that's what I'll do. Okay, um, so thanks everybody for uh, a robust discussion on this. I really appreciate uh, I do appreciate everybody's work and, and passion on on this. You know, Dan for bringing Dan for bringing this up, and and Deborah, Amanda, Martha, Dave, and Katie and Scott for your input. Uh, this has been really valuable. I feel like we've we've gotten uh, a lot of progress on this. So, um, anything else? I'm going to send out for the peak goals. Um, we didn't get a chance to do this. I'll send out an email 
and you guys can just uh, edit them, the, um, the members of the group. I promise I won't add anything to Scott and Katie's uh, agenda for the year. And um, let me see, their agenda. I think that's about it. Is there anything else before I adjourn the meeting? Okay, uh, all right. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I'll, do we need a motion to adjourn? I always forget. No. Nah. Okay, nah. I call our March 22nd meeting uh, adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Annie. Bye-bye. Brittany and Kathy, thank you for staying over a few minutes. I'm sorry about that.